we have allowed these detrimental and very, very destructive influences into our lives. And listen to them. A spiritual concept to learn here is that once Satan gets one bad thing in the door, the rest of his malignant and caustic friends, and I use that term lightly, can come in as well. But they won't come in right away. They wait outside, allowing us to get allowing us the time to get used to the uneasy feeling and the queasy stomach. The adjustment is slow, insidious, and very poisonous. Most of us don't even realize that the change is happening until they're already inside the iron trap of evil. But that's another sermon. The seven deadly sins, which I told you you can connect to pride, are greed, envy, wrath, sloth, gluttony, lust, and, of course, pride. There's a reason that pride is the last one on the list. It is the most dangerous, and it can happen to every human. And like I said, it's the root of others. What I have for you is, uh, is are statements that exemplify the sin. And then I can connect them to pride. Greed. I want, I want, I want. Greed is an intense desire to, to, to possess material things. Now, how we connect that to pride is, I deserve that, and I'm not getting it. This is more important than God. Envy. Sorrow at another's good fortune. Or, they have something, and I don't want them to have it. I don't necessarily want it myself. I just don't want them to have it. How that, how that connects to pride is, they're no better than me. Why should they get something and I don't? Wrath. A love of justice perverted to revenge. For example, I have been offended and I am going to get my revenge. This is, this is a very simple thing. Anger is not necessarily a bad thing. It's simply a crossing of boundaries. If someone crosses boundaries that wrongs you and anger gives us the energy to do something about it. However, we are encouraged not to sin in our anger. What that means is it's okay to be angry. It's a natural thing. It's, it's okay. But we can't turn to hatred. We can't turn to malice or any of these other sins that I've got listed for you to in anger because that's when things can go wrong. It is written, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So when we get angry and there's nothing we can do about it, give it to God. The uh, Vengeance is mine scripture is in Deuteronomy 32, 35, and also in Romans 12, 9. The New Testament echoes the Old a lot. There's a song. It's what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will, our, who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. There's another sermon in there as well, but what that means is, is that Christ knows all our problems. He's been here. He's experienced them. And he said, give them to me. We'll deal with I'll deal with them. That's what I mean by vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. How we tie wrath back to pride is, I did not, I have been wronged, and I did not deserve to be. I should be allowed to get what's mine, no matter the cost. Sloth. Failure to utilize one's talents and gifts. In other words, why should I have to do anything? It's not like I have anything to offer. Pride is this is the way I was created. I have there's nothing I have nothing that I can do that others can't. I'm not unique, and I'm okay with that. Strange, right? God gives us gifts. God gives us abilities. We're supposed to use them. If you can sing, you're supposed to sing. If you can juggle, lucky you, because I can't juggle for nothing. I mean, it's like I have two left hands. It just doesn't. It doesn't work. But if you have talents, God put them there. And if you have talents, you should use them. For in doing so, it is one of the greatest acts of worship. Gluttony, an excessive, almost obsessive desire to eat 
and eat well to the point of selfishness. Pride. In a sense, you're placing your own needs above others. I am more important than others. I am more important than God. Lust. To set one's heart upon anything that is not of God or to place something else above God. It's similar to greed. And pride. Well, this is obviously... But it's an excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God. It's also been called the sin from which all of us arise. Pride is also known as vanity. To put a bow on this, I have a few verses on humility for you. Philippians 2, verse 3. Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility, think of others better than yourselves. Proverbs 22, 4. The reward of humility and the fear of the Lord is wealth, honor, and life. Proverbs 18.12 Pride comes before a disaster, but humility comes before respect. I've said all of this to say we need to find humility. We need to find that place on our knees in front of God's throne. And this is, I'm, I'm speaking out to those of you who already believe. We need to find that place back on our knees. It is written, Psalm 34, 18. The Lord's Spirit is near those with a, with a broken and contrite spirit. If we find that place on our knees and turn away from pride, we find humility. He will be with us again. Like I said, the reward of humility and the fear of the Lord is wealth honor and life if you look through the proverbs you'll find many things about humility and what it brings you humility is being submissive it's knowing where you belong in the kingdom and keeping that place that's what I mean by submissive you make sure that you never put yourself above God and in doing so you will remain in humility. To those of you who don't believe, humility is a good way to go. At some point in my college education, I came to the realization that even those who don't believe can still follow God's Word. If you look at it, it's just a book. A book of wisdom, a book of knowledge, a book of, a book of history. You can see where others have gone wrong. You can see where they did right and model yourself after it. That's the whole purpose of history class anyway. And following the Lord's laws, it brings about a change in your life. You find yourself feeling a lot better than you would otherwise. And He is near to you. I would invite you to join us as we go about this journey, letting God guide us. And I thank you for listening to the first... YouTube sermon. I know that I'll be delivering many more of these. Come back if you wish. God's arms are always open. And he will receive you every time. As a salutation, keep living, keep laughing, keep loving. And as always, keep looking up.